Hey, Rooted Coop family. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to be diving into the art of soap making again, but with a twist. We are creating our classic goat milk and kale and clay bar infused with a sweet orange blossom fragrance that is going to be a treat for your senses. We have gathered all of our ingredients and are preparing to start. Got our goat milk powder and kale and clay that we will be adding to our base oils. I'm going to whisk those in and next we will be adding in our lye water solution. But I thought we could have a chat today about the most popular soap making method that's got everyone hooked. Cold process soap making. Why is it so popular, you ask? Well, it's one of the rock stars of soap making methods. Cold process soap making allows us to create artisanal bars with endless possibilities. It's like a canvas for soap enthusiasts. This method preserves the natural goodness of ingredients and offers creative freedom. It makes each bar unique works of art. So let's dive in and try to answer some questions. So what exactly is cold process soap making? Well, it's a traditional method where the oils and fats are combined with an alkali, usually sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, to create a soap through a chemical process known as saponification. Unlike hot process soap making, cold process soap is allowed to cure naturally over time, creating a hard and long lasting bar. How to make cold process soap? You always want to use your safety gear, including goggles, gloves, and handle the lye safely. You want to weigh your oils correctly and accurately. Some typical choices of oils would be olive, coconut, and palm oil. You want to carefully prepare your lye water solution, making sure to follow the safety guidelines and allow it to cool before adding it to your oils. Most soapers tend to try to get the oil and lye water solution to be close to the same temperature with 10 to 20 degree difference. Some like to soap at room temperature, some like to soap a little bit warmer. Every soap maker has their own preferred method, depending on either personal preference or the batch of soap that they're making or the time that they have. So once you've gathered your ingredients, you're going to combine the lye water solution into the oil you're going to stir the mixture until you reach a trace. So that's where your stick blender would come in or if you're using the whisk method or some of the other methods that there are. Trace and soaping, what does that mean? Well, trace refers to the stage in the soap making process when the mixture of oil and lye has thickened enough that if you lift your stick blender, and drizzle the soap back on top of itself, it leaves a visible trace or a mark on the surface. Reaching trace is a critical step in soap making because it signifies that the saponification process has begun. Saponification is the chemical reaction between the oils or the fats and the lye, the sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, resulting in the formation of soap. There are two main stages of trace. There's thin trace, which is when the soap mixture has just begun to thicken, and there's just a faint trace or mark left on the surface when drizzled. At this stage, the soap is still very pourable, making it suitable for creating those intricate designs and swirls. A thick trace, on the other hand, is when the soap mixture has significantly thickened, resembling a pudding or custard. It leaves a well-defined and lasting trace on the surface. Soap at a thick trace is often preferred for making layered soaps or when working with additives like exfoliants or essential oils. The 
the time that it takes to reach trace can vary depending on many factors, such as the oils being used, the temperature of the ingredients, and the method of mixing. Soap makers need to monitor the trace closely to ensure that the soap is adequately mixed before pouring it into a mold. If the soap does not reach trace, it may not set properly or result in uneven distribution of the additives. On the other hand, overmixing can also lead to a too thick trace, making it challenging to pour and create certain designs. So it's just a, a matter of getting the perfect balance of the level of trace for what type of design that you're going for and sometimes you just have to work with what you have to work with as well. Adding fragrance and additives such as scents, colors, or any other additional things like herbs or clays can also affect the trace. Once you have completed making your soap and have poured it into the mold, it's going to need to set for 24 to 48 hours depending on your recipe. Some may not need as much if there's a higher coconut content, so it depends on the recipe for that as well. And then you're going to cut the bars, allowing them to cure for several weeks. This ensures that they're mild and gentle on the skin. The quote Cure time allows the excess water to leave the soap and to allow it to maintain a consistent weight. So why is cold process soap making so popular? It allows for artistic expression through various colors, scents, and designs. It retains its natural benefits of the oils and additives since it doesn't involve the high temperatures that might degrade them and they generally result in a harder, longer-lasting bar compared to some other soap methods. Other soap methods can also be hot process soap making. This is a method that involves cooking the soap mixture to accelerate the saponification process. It can allow for a shorter cure time compared to the cold process because the heat can cause it to lose the water weight and maintain its weight quicker. It also creates a rustic Textured appearance. There's melt and pour soap making, which is melting pre made soap bases and adding some fragrance and coloring or additives. It's quick and easy for beginners. There's very limited control over the ingredients, though, compared to, to the other soap making processes. There's also rebatching and liquid soap making. But remember that each method has its very own list of pros and cons, and the choice strictly depends upon personal preference, skill level, and the desired outcome. And now back to our goat milk and kale and clay orange blooms bar. I'm pouring on a little bit of white soap batter on top of these orange bars. So we're just going to add a layer of pure white soap to the top to kind of spice things up a little bit. But I hope that y'all enjoyed the discussion on the cold process making and what it is. I hope that I answered some of the questions that you may have. I think that all of the methods have their place and their value and that each soap maker needs to determine what's best for them and for the results that they're looking for. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be adding some orange embeds to the top of this just for a little extra, uh, just for a little extra touch to these. And I'm trying to uh, put this piece of tape on here that I marked my lines. And so I'm trying to line these balls up 
so that whenever I put them in my soap cutter, I don't knock the balls off or don't cut the balls. So I'm trying to figure out how this is going to work best to get all of this to fit on there. And now I'm just arranging the balls down the middle of the loaf. And while we're doing this, while I'm doing those, I want to give a huge shout out to those of you who have already subscribed to our channel. You guys are the real MVPs and we love and appreciate you all so much. And for those of you who haven't, let's change that. Be sure and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, do all the things so you can become a part of the Rooted Coop family where we're on a journey of creativity and I want you guys to join us right here. I don't want y'all to miss out on some delightful creations that we have coming up. Uh, trust me, you guys don't want to miss out on a few things that we have in store. I have some very interesting videos that I'm working on making for all of you, and hopefully I can get those out in the next few weeks. Okay, so I spin that up a little bit so we could go ahead and get those beautiful embeds on top. Added my shimmer to the top of them. You can just see this shimmer just flying everywhere. And ta-da! Our soap is ready to charm your senses. It's going to sit for the next 24 hours and I will come back with the cut so we can see what these delightful bars turned out like. And even with all that measuring, I still managed to nick some of these so I did not have my alignment out correctly. So definitely we'll be working on that. But look at how cute they turned out. They are definitely ready to charm your senses. Don't forget to subscribe because that is your ticket to be sure that you never miss out on such a delightful creation. Thank you guys for joining me today on this fragrant adventure. Remember, whether you're a seasoned soap maker or just a beginner, the cold process method opens up a world of possibilities. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay rooted in our creative journey. As always, Stay clean, stay creative, stay rooted. Enjoy the scents and embrace the suds. Bye for now, y'all.